Who are the Sharks? They're entrepreneurial leaders in the North Texas Conference churches with a passion for reaching new people for Christ. The Reverend Debbie Lyons serves as the senior pastor at First United Methodist Church, Winsboro. Her passion for community engagement has earned her the mayor's key to the city. Philip Neely, a lay member at Whaley United Methodist Church in Gainesville, has more than 20 years of experience in business development and currently serves as president and CEO of Trident Process Systems. The Reverend Sylvia Wang serves as the senior pastor at First United Methodist Church, Archer City. As chair of the conference's Journey Towards Racial Justice coordinating team, she helps develop strategies to create an equitable future for all people in the North Texas Conference. Greg Hickman, lay leader at Whitesboro United Methodist Church, is the owner and CEO of First Texas Home Health, a leading home health care system. The Reverend Dr. Andy Stoker is an interfaith leader who has served as a United Methodist pastor for more than 20 years. Today, he is Chief Engagement Officer at the Thanksgiving Foundation. Jessica Vargas, Mission Coordinator in the North Texas Conference Center for Church Development, supports leaders across the conference as they identify new ways to engage their communities for Christ. First into the spark tank is Abram Escutia with The Loft, a new young adult ministry from Casa Emanuel United Methodist Church. What really sparked the idea for this is that uh, our community uh, currently has no young adult ministry in our area and just the location of our church. Uh, it's a great idea to start a young adult ministry. We have a recreational center right next door and we have uh, Brian Adams High School across the street. Good morning, Sharks. My name is Abraham Escutia, and we are from Casa Manuel United Methodist Church, and I'm here with our Reverend Pastor Paul Barton. Hello. And we're looking for a $10,000 investment in our new space called The Loft. The Loft is a young adult ministry that we're looking to start in Casa Manuel uh, United uh, Methodist Church. So this idea started because of a need. Uh, I remember sitting down at an administrative council meeting, and one of the members said, Joaquin Martinez said, what would what people are going to be asking why would we want to join united methodist church um besides all the other churches that are on our street or in our area and what we notice is that no other street in uh, no other church in our street has a young adult ministry we also came with the need that at our church about i'd say about the average age of our members is 65 years old so there's a need to rejuvenate the church bring younger members to the church become leaders that, that will serve in the church and disciples of Christ in our church. Um, we're looking to start a young adult ministry and our, our church is located at a, at a great area to where we can fill that. Um, next to our church, we have a recreational center and right across the street, we have a high school. So we, we're really positioned in a great area so, so that this can take off and grow. At the loft, we are planning to give um, evangelism teachings discipleship teachings and we're, we're looking to make it uh, to where we talk about topics relevant to the young adult today to the generation today and we have the support of of our church members we have the hope and desire to do it well, all we need is is the funds to to get this this thing uh, rolling so what do you say uh, why don't you provide us for, provide us with those funds so, you can, so that you can come chill at me uh, with me at the loft. I really like this idea. This is close to home here in Whitesboro. We're facing the same type of situation. Uh, our average age in the, in the congregation is, is older. Uh, we're really trying to reach out to those young adults, and it's hard uh, to do that. So we're going through a lot of the same stuff. What, what, age, er, what, what age range are you talking about uh, whenever you talk about young adults? We want to focus on 18 and up to 35 years old. Okay. But we do not rule out the, we, we're not rolling out completely going a little bit under the age of 18. Okay. Just because of the area that we are in. All right. Well, I mean, obviously church attendance is down nationwide. And that's the only way that we're going to build it back up on doing that. I have four boys myself, all young adults. Two of them recently married. And I think it's important that you, you focus on young married couples 
uh, as well to get them in the church so that their kids are going to grow up in the church. So, I mean, I'm, I'll jump in right now for $2,500 uh, to you guys. I think, it's a, I think it's a good project. Thank you. Thank you very much. But I would give you this advice. You need to go ask for money because there's money out there, not just here. But, but one thing you need to do in your application is be very detailed. So you kind of had your furniture, you had a budget, but it was, the two budgets didn't match exactly. But get, get your budget very detailed on how you want to remodel that room and down to the dollar. I mean, and then when you're talking to someone and asking for money, the more details, the better. So you want to do that. And if you say, you know, if you say my remodel is going to be 1250 and I'm going to spend 3000 on furniture and it ends up your remodel's 3000 and you spend 1250 on furniture, that's fine. Just when you read me with whoever you're working with, just tell them that here's what happened and why. So the communication about the, the details and communication when you're asking for money is very important. Uh, I think you have a really good concept. I think you have a, a, a good plan. I, that would be my advice though, is when you're, go ask for money and put that detail in there and don't worry if it's not right. You, you're, you're, things are gonna happen where it doesn't work out like you thought and you're gonna spend money where you didn't think you would. But then when you come back, say, here's what happened, here's where we spent it, and here's why, and here's what I need now. So that's, uh, so I don't know if this investment's for me, but that's the advice I'd give you, and I think you're on a good path. Thank you, sir. I also, also want to add, I really am so touched by your, both of your passion, your church's passion for young adults. But I also want to just encourage you that even if the loft is not fully renovated, might there be another possibility to gather some young adults by invitation and go out to a restaurant and have a devotional and a light meal there together and have that going on while the renovation is happening in your space. And so so that way, you know, don't have to wait for the space to be up and running before starting Yellow Adults Ministry. It sounds like you all have some young adults already. This proposal was put together by four of our young adults oh, that's of awesome. the church. So it yes. is not it's not the older members or the uh, long-term long -term established members who say we want to reach this population. It's the young adults themselves who, who, who thought about it and developed it and brought it forward. It's a good grassroots mm -hmm. start for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. So we do have some, so a number of young adults and, and uh, they're very excited about uh, reaching out to uh, their friends and other persons and uh, activating this group. So as Mark Cuban would say, he's going to start the 24 second clock and 24 seconds. Can you tell us how you're going to reach these young adults? What's your marketing plan? I agree with you that the budget wasn't very clear. So what are you going to do to reach these people? So we want to implement a, a plan that's called invite one. Um, so everybody has somebody that will invite. So that's, that's our main, uh, goal of reaching out is just doing what have to say that, Hey, we're meet this days and just invite somebody. Don't even say that. Don't tell them that we're going to the church. Just say, Hey, we're, we're inviting you to go bowling. We, we want to start meeting and creating those relationships outside of church and then move them into church. And then that's how we would start uh, our, our plan. And then after that, we would, from those invite one people, we want to give them something about it, what it means to be a disciple of Christ, what it means to evangelize so that we, they can multiply. And one friend reaches one friend, then that friend knows another friend, and it'll kind of be like a tree. I want to join Greg in on investing in this project at $2,500 as well. I think the value add I would bring to, to this vision is I've been involved in youth and young adult ministry my whole career and would love to articulate what it might look like for, uh, for some developmentally appropriate ways to connect uh, with, with this community, especially if you're dipping under 18 and some of the developmental differences that, that would need to be there. I'm, I'm excited about joining, joining this because of the biliterate, bicultural, uh, bilingual way of being uh, that, uh, that Custom Manuel is bringing to the, to the table. So. Um, I'm really excited about this, and uh, with Greg's help, I think we could probably have a wonderful um, support system for you as you get this launched. That would be great, man. Thank That's you. That's great, but we're at 50%. But we'll have to get to the next set. <laughs> What's the gestures of what would you like to see for, for a full 100% funding of this? The last group brought muffins. Uh. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I love that you have the courage to ask for the rest. Yes. You got to keep looking. You got to keep asking, don't you? That's right. Well, I think you got um, two great charts. Uh, besides the funding, you have two great charts that are going to be working with you, helping you develop and develop this idea, and also giving you guidelines on, uh, and guidance on how to actually get that more funding that you might need and might be looking for. Um, we appreciate your idea. Gracias. We appreciate that you're here. We appreciate that you're trying to reach that young adult because they are key um, in helping grow the church. And um, with that, we appreciate that uh, you're coming and you're here with us. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you very much for coming. We're going to Disneyland. <laughs> no, Great, it's just fantastic. Feels wonderful. Yeah. Uh, yes, um, we're so thankful. Thankful for their uh, support, their excitement, uh, and their encouragement. We are uh, looking forward to being able to use those funds to start this new ministry for young adults at Casa Manuel. Yeah, yeah we really have some sharks that uh, really support in what we're doing. Um, we have a shark that uh, kind of relates to what's going on and it's kind of on the same boat with the same church that we need to grow uh, our young adults. And we also have a shark that has worked with young adults and youth for many, many years. So their, their, their input is going to be phenomenal. Next into the tank is the Reverend Melissa Hatch of Button Memorial United Methodist Church. Their Buttons and Bows foster closet will serve foster families in the area, equipping them with clothes, supplies, and support as they care for children in need. Uh, our desire is to help foster families. And we're gonna start with the foster closet, although we have an idea that we think will, will grow well beyond just the closet. But at its initial stage, it'll be making new and gently worn clothing available to foster families for free. Um, foster closets uh, have been something we've been blessed with over the years that we've been fostering and um, we wanted to bring one closer to home and um, bless other people how we've been blessed. And the hope is, is that it will grow from there, that it will be a community of support. And right. um, she says one of the things that ha has been hard is to be able to have those conversations with other foster families. And so hopefully we'll do some small groups or maybe bring in some speakers that can come and be a nurturing part of their, um, their families and really create a community um, where they know that they're supported not only by us, but each other. Good afternoon, Sharks. Well, good afternoon. I'm here today to tell you a cautionary tale, a warning. Our God answers prayers, so be careful what you pray for. <laughs> Case in point, on Sunday, September 18th, 2022, our pastor Melissa asked our congregation to dream big. Our God is a God of big dreams, she said. Jordan and her partner Rachel did exactly that and dreamed big. They dreamed about a, a foster closet. Do you know there are over 3,000 children in foster care in the, in the Metroplex? It's amazing, right? That 900 in Dallas County, 800 in Tarrant County, there are 200 foster families in Denton County alone. That's where our church is located. New places. Our project is to start a foster closet uh, in, in our church. Now, what is a foster closet? A foster closet is a place making new and gently worn clothing available to foster families for no cost. Meeting regularly, absolutely. The foster closet will be open once a month on Saturday morning or uh, by appointment as needed. Discipleship, absolutely. We will build a Christian community among the foster families of our area. It's our vision to be a concierge service for foster families. It starts with a foster closet, but as we offer, uh, as we start to connect and grow the foster closet, we will offer support for the families. These support groups, that's one of the key concepts we're, we're, we're working towards, that are support groups. What Jordan has shared with us is that foster parents need safe, encouraging, empathetic Christian connection. We offer our space for that purpose. Beyond that, we offer training for foster families. Uh, we will invite hosts, uh, we'll host speakers to come in and talk to us about parenting, the joy of fostering, et cetera. 
these foster parents are, are truly angels. They're doing, they're truly being hands and feet of Jesus in our world. I have some questions. Uh, I'm actually myself, I'm a foster parent currently, and so is my husband. And uh, so I just, I'm aware that there's uh, services available to foster parents that uh, you know, come through various agencies. What can uh, your new space ministry provide for foster parents that other agencies might not be able to, to help out with? Given that time is, is very difficult for foster parents with all the home visits, all the requirements for trainings and all of that. So what, what, can, um, what can be the invitation that will help a busy foster mom, you know, be, be thinking like, oh, this is something I want to try out. Um, we do have an agency and we get lots of support for our agency. Um, I've told them before too, um, there's lots of places on social media for foster parents to connect and things like that. Um, but I think it's a little bit different when you actually get to sit in front of someone face to face and talk to them about things that you go through and because they understand. Um, and I think sometimes that gets lost behind a keyboard when you're on social media and your agency understands to an extent, but they're not in the trenches with you per se day in and day out as a foster parent. So I think just being able to sit in front of other people that understand that will be a huge help. I think there's a level of flexibility too we can offer. So if, if there's a, there's a scheduling issue or just a need, if we need to drive someone to take clothes to someone, things of that nature, and all that stuff is in the realm of possibilities. Right now, the only, the closest foster closet to us is in Wiley, which is what, 30, 40 miles away. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that we offer is it's a Christian based. Um, it's a place where we will have people available to pray with a foster family that maybe they're getting ready to have to give their foster kids back. Um, and they're going through a tough time. We've, um, we've walked out with Rachel and Jordan um, just two days before Mother's Day. Yes. Um, and we walked that journey with them. And that's, a, that's probably not the support she got from her agency, but it's the place that she got support from her church family. So while it's not necessarily indicated that we want everybody to join the church, but that could happen. Um, and so we offer a Christian-based environment where that support can be given, where love can be given. We've already taken on that several of us will consider um, being trained through the foster care system. So moms come or dads come with their foster kids that will have trained individuals that can watch their kids mm -hmm. while they shop, while they sit and talk, have coffee, whatever it is. And that's, that's a huge thing too, because um, our family alone, I think, both of our moms are trained, and then we have one friend on each side that's trained. Other than that, we don't have anybody that can babysit for us, and I've seen that a lot on the foster care sites, as people are constantly asking for people to do respite and things like that. So it would be nice to have more people to lean on and trust with our kiddos. I know as, as time goes on, there's adaptability, just to see what's needed by the people who come, by the parents who come. Uh, how how will this deepen the discipleship of uh, of the foster moms and dads who who come? How would that create more of an intentional Christian community and help them to get to know Jesus more? Well, I think down the road we can offer small group ministries and Bible studies and parents' night out certainly is a way that parents can connect and then we keep their kids. But to be able to have those small groups where parents get to connect with each other, so maybe that's in the form of almost like a celebrate recovery around round tables where people get to sit there and talk about a subject. Um, maybe that subject is about Christian parenting. Maybe it's not. Um, I think we have to start where people are. And I think oftentimes, and when we start new ministries, we want to go too far and we want to go, we got to get them into the door and have them join the church. Cause if they're not joining our numbers, we aren't doing anything. And unfortunately as a conference, we get judged on our numbers. Um, but I think it's the lives that we make a difference with. So whether they join the church or not is not what's our basis. Um, it's our basis to share them with them the love of Christ, um, that we love them and we support them and we want to walk with them on this journey and make that easier in any way possible. In my discovery going through this journey right now is that there is still stigma in our societies in the foster care system about the kids who are not wanted, which is not true. It just they just need the right home for the right time, I guess. I don't have a good, a good word for that. Uh, and by means, no means am I judging any system or commenting on that. But I just want to share with you, I really applaud your effort. And when I... Okay. 
when I reviewed your application, I teared up like I did now. Yeah, us too. Us too. So before I cry all the way out, <laughs> <laughs> so let's start laughing. Um, I will devote $2,500 and invest and walk alongside with you on. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And what a blessing that you have that hands-on experience. I could not foster a puppy. <laughs> I noticed that your request for the budget was pretty broad and not very specific. From 5000 to 10000 Have you considered, you know, when I first looked at this, I thought, wow, it's such a, a specific ministry, foster children. Mm -hmm. If in our community, we have a lot of grandparents that aren't official foster parents, but that's what they're doing because their children are drug addicted, whatever, they're raising their grandchildren. Have you considered expanding the ministry to reach a little beyond just foster? And then my second question of that is what specifically is the money it was used for? I, after working in many volunteer capacities and, and going through clothing, um, I want these kids to have new clothes. Um, gently used is great, but there's something to be said when a kid goes into like a CPS system, I've seen the trash bags that they've come out of their houses with at last minute and they don't have anything that's new. So while we could start this grassroots and do donations and gently used clothing that we wash, which is great, I would love to start this with new stuff and new clothing is expensive. So we'd like to buy, we, we don't have like much churches, we don't have a lot of storage space, so we're gonna have to be creative and, and Jordan helped us think about creative ways to do that. Find those big plastic tubs that they can be sorted in and stacked in various areas, probably in our sanctuary choir loft right now. No one will know that. <laughs> um, but we want to purchase clothing. We want to purchase clothing racks. That's the initial expense. And in terms of like grandparents and those kind of situations, yeah, I think I think that applies to this as well. In terms of some of the parenting sort of you know, Christian-based support groups from a parenting perspective, it's a tough road, right? And navigating life as a Christian as a grandparent taking care of your grandchildren as a full-time parent. I mean, that's, there's some challenges there. And I think that's some, but there's also a tremendous amount of wisdom, I suspect, and experience we can tap into. So just to build a community where there's just this theme of Christian parenting is, it's pretty cool. And to kind of add on to what they're saying, um, the foster closet that has blessed us the most, and, I've, and I know the other one as well, um, they typically cater to younger ages because the younger ones don't understand when something's not new or anything like that. Um, so you don't see older kids or teenagers or anything like that, that at these foster closets. So we would like to reach out to other ages and older kids want new things. They, and these kiddos have been through so much. They deserve something new. So we'd like to reach them as well. So I think the good presentation and I think the word, the, the concept of a concierge for foster families is, is a good way to put because that's a, that shows that you've got a plan to grow and do more down the road as you develop it. So I think that's a good thing to say. Um, one question I had, you said you wanted to focus on families within 20 miles of your church. Do you have any idea what that number is? Uh, would it, would it 20 miles? I think that was in your application. Mm -hmm. I think, well, you said that there are, there are 200 foster families just in Denton County, okay. which is a larger area. Um, I don't know that we have the specific numbers within 20 miles. I would like to give $2,500 to your, uh, to your efforts there. And, and the one thing that I want to ask as we move forward and talk about stuff is sort of uh, like what Debbie said, I think it's really important to get very specific on your budget and understand once you know what you have, then you can do that. But I think that's a really big first step and, and planning and, and being organized and intentional. But I, I'm, I'm excited and I think you have a, a great time. So I hate to, well, thank you very much. I'd like to join Phil and Sylvia with $2,500 as well. One of, the gifts, one of the gifts that COVID brought in my life is partnering with a psychologist and pediatrician. We launched Parenting for the Present, which is now a nonprofit where we're trying to connect with parents, especially of younger children, to develop a wider understanding of what it looks like to have a holistic child development into adolescent development, a, adult development program uh, focused on body, mind, spirit. So not only would I like to offer what I have is the $2,500, but if there's anything that I could do along with Matthew Housen and Dr. Early Dennison to walk alongside you in some parent education and how that might be framed and be an encouragement to you and then maybe also 
amplify that marketing through our podcast uh, and also uh, further reach into uh, connecting with more parents in more profound ways. Thank you all so much for this amazing Thank presentation. You. Praise God. That's awesome. I'm real curious, and I've been watching you, and there's a lot of emotion in your eyes. Yes. The weird script. What does this mean to you? Um, sorry. That's okay. It means everything. Because these kids have gone through so much. Um, their real parents have not seen them since they left the hospital. So we would love nothing more than for them to be ours. Um, but we have been blessed so, so much by other foster closets. Um, I mean, she knows this probably. But we got a call and they were in our house within an hour. So um, being able to have a place for other families to go with that same situation means the world to us. Um, because we have been more blessed than I could ever tell you by these places. Yes. We've gotten bassinets, cribs, things that you can, can't even imagine from these places. So we want to share that with other people. But what I can offer is a lot of prayer. I think what you're doing is amazing. And uh, I applaud you because not many people have the courage to do that. And uh, I think it's really, it's, it's cool. It is. So, so anyways. Well, congratulations. You're walking away with three sharks and um, $7,500 in grants. Um, we appreciate your time and effort, your heartfelt um, application and presentation. Um, we're all in prayers for this, not just this space, but, but also for you as a family. Um, and we appreciate again being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody want to look at the baby so fun? We feel great. We feel we elated, great. excited. Answer to prayers. Blessed. We have a fellow foster parent. That's really exciting. Yes. Um, we have someone that's got connections to places that we can use for speakers and really create a, what did he say, mind, body, spirit? Yeah, he actually had uh, parenting. Like a whole, like he created, this seems like the answer to prayers. The, yeah. seems, seems like the perfect person that has sort of already kind of thought out how to do the support groups from a Christian foundational basis. I mean, that's exactly what we were looking for. So, And then someone that can help us put some numbers and thought yes. behind our budget and yes. making sure that we're using, being a good steward with what we've been given um, and go from there. Now we got to go to work, unfortunately. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> now the real work starts, yes. but we're, we're thrilled. We're really, this has been a wonderful experience. Uh, asked a lot of great questions. I'm excited. We're we're thrilled to have professionals working with us. We're thrilled to get this started. So come check us out in Little Elm. Find us on Facebook, Buttons and Bows Ministry, Foster Closet. We'll see you there soon. <laughs>